Hello, this is Diego once again. In this tutorial, you will learn how to define concrete cross sections with the ETAPS API, including the reinforcement pattern. And we will also see how to use these automatically generated cross sections in order to optimize our concrete elements in the ETAPS model. So let's get started. This is the ETAPS model we are dealing with in this tutorial. So first, let's take a look how the concrete design in ETAPS works. So if I come here to a concrete, concrete section, um, so basically the concrete design means that ETAPS, or we along with ETAPS, are going to decide what reinforcement, the reinforcement of our concrete elements is going to be. So if I came to the to this tab to reinforcement, so here I can see there are many options to choose from, but basically these two are the ones that are the most important for us now because there are basically two different approaches to concrete design. So first we can choose our reinforcement to be designed and that means that ETAPS is going to determine how, how much area of reinforcement is needed for that particular element. For instance, I don't know, 12 square centimeters and now we are going to decide from that input or that output what our reinforcement is going to look like. Like, I don't know, perhaps in that case could be like uh, four bars of diameter um, 20 millimeters. But that's right, that's this option to be designed. But now there is this other approach to be checked. And what that means is that we are going to provide ETAPs with a certain section with a really mm, determined a reinforcement pattern, like I don't know, perhaps uh, three rebars on the top uh, layer and three here on the on the lower layer as well, and I don't know, perhaps in this case, uh, five rebars on each side. So now with this data, it is going to check that particular section, and it is going to say if it's if it works or not, or more exactly, it's going to give us a ratio um, how well that section works in relation to the forces that it is subjected to. So basically there are, these are these two approaches and I usually use uh, our reinforcement to be designed when I am dealing with uh, beams because I think this is quite a straightforward. You just get the, the square centimeters and you decide the reinforcement. And I usually use the reinforcement to be checked when I am designing my concrete columns because with columns we usually, we usually have a, like um, bending in two directions and in those cases, it's very important, it makes a difference where the rebar is actually located. So in that case, I want to provide ETAPs with um, different cross-sections and let ETAPs choose from these cross-sections uh, what the optimal one for each case is. So that's what we are going to do with the API. What, what we are going to do now is automatically de define different cross-sections with of course with uh, the different patterns of rebar so ETAPS can automatically design our columns and let us know what the best cross sections for each case are so let's get into it this is the excel sheet that we are going to use and this macro is going to work basically with both rectangular cross sections and with circular cross sections so these are the data we have to provide our macro with Basically the cross-section type, whether it is rectangular or circular, and then the dimensions, the two sides, if, the, if it is rectangular, or the diameter, if this is a circular section, and then of course the pattern of our reinforcement. And then we have to decide the material of this cross-section, which of course has to be previously defined in ETAPS. And finally here, this sheet automatically calculates the ratio of that reinforcement pattern in relation with the concrete cross section. So we don't, you don't have to, to copy anything here, the, the, formal, the formula is automatically, is already defined, so just let, let, let Excel do the work. Okay, so I've already created this list of cross sections here to save some time in this tutorial, and now I'm just going to paste it, paste it here and yes this is our data so we are going to use um, circular cross sections as well as rectangular cross sections and these are our, these are our ratios which uh, Excel is automatically calculating okay so this is our data and this is the name of the material that we are going to use for the river that of course it's also defined into ETAPS as you can see here 
And now let's jump into the Visual Basic Editor. Okay, so perhaps I can put Excel on this side of the screen. And no, not that. And the Visual Basic Editor here. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to um, add a reference to our ETAPS library. In this case, I've already done that. And now we're gonna start programming. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to copy some lines in order to do it faster, but I'm sorry for that. But of course, you can just write down your email address in a comment and I will send you the complete macro of this tutorial. Okay, so let's start with our first subroutine, which could be will be to set our cross sections into ETAPS. That's right. So the first thing we need is to create a connection with ETAPS. So we are going to attach to a running instance of ETAPS. And we've already done that in, in several other tutorials. So if this is your first time dealing with the ETAPS API, I recommend that you watch some of my older tutorials. And that's right. So this is the our first the first thing we need to do. Now we should be able to create a connection with this uh, ETAPS object here and we are ready to go. So of course the first thing we need is to get the uh, to know in which lines this table is defined so we can loop off um, through all of these cross sections and that's what we are going to do. So first we have to declare some variables that we are going to be using later on. And let's start with the loop of our cross sections. So I'm going to use this keyword with because what we can do with that is just to not only to write faster, but I don't have to write my sub model every time, which will avoid some typos later on. It always happens to me because in the um, API documentation, it's written another way. I think it's a sub model, not my sub model. So I always get some errors because of that and I can avoid them with this with keyword. Okay, so of course I have to set my units to kilonewtons and meters and now I'm ready to generate my cross sections. So um, that's right, so I'm going to look from the row number 5 to till the end of the table which is automatically determined here, so no need to worry about that. And now let's get started. So first we need to assign our data to the variables that we already defined in order to pass these values into the ETAPS functions later on. So first we need the prefix, either this is a uh, rectangular cross section or a circular one. And then we are going to get the, the concrete QR cover, which is defined here. And we are going to use its time, uh, yes, since we are using meters in ETAPS, I have to convert this value from centimeters into, into meters. Okay, and now the river size, we are going to get it from here, but this is a bit particular because although this is defined in millimeters, uh, it's actually a, a text variable, a text variable, I'm sorry, and it has to match exactly the name of our river already defined here. So no need to convert that into meters. Okay, so let's move on. This is our prefix, clear cover, river size, and now we have, now it gets complicated. First, we need to get the name of our, oops, sorry. We need to get the, the name of our crux section what did I just did? Okay. So in order to define the name of our cross sections, we are going to use a, a, a function, an additional function, so that our code remains relatively clear. So I'm going to define that that function right now. And basically we are going to define the names of our cross sections based on the information, the dimensions, the river, and so on. And that's basically what this uh, function does. It takes the first, of course, it, it's different 
whether they are rectangular or circular cross-sections and then it takes the data of the dimensions and reinforcement pattern and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are function here and it basically it returns the name of the cross-section. So th that's what we are getting here. And now let's get back to our loop. So what we can do now is say, okay, if we are dealing with a rectangular cross-section, then we are going to use this function from the etaps API. I'm sorry for that. Okay, until here. And of course, this uh, here I would have to write my sub model, but since I, am, since I am using width, it's not no longer necessary. And of course, all those functions are defined in the API documentation file, which you can find in the installation folder of etaps. So, I mean, and we've already seen this in other tutorials, so I'm not going to go any deeper into this topic. And, yeah, so basically, we just have to uh, introduce, the, of course, the name, the material property of our cross-section, the dimensions, and so on and so forth, for our rectangular cross-section. And then, in case that this is a, cir a circular cross-section, we have to use another different, a different function that we are going to see right now. That's right, if the prefix is C, then we have to... We have to use this function here, set circle, and again, dimensions, material, and that's it. Okay, so that's everything regarding the cross sections, but now the next step would be to define the reinforcement. So that's what we are going to do, but First, in order to define the reinforcement, we need to use this function here. So I, let me, yes, that's right. So frame object would have to come right here. So set rear column. That's the method we are going to use. And these, these are our parameters. So now it's very important to define the number of beams of, of uh, bars in this case, if, if we are dealing with a rectangular cross section, that go in that goes in each direction of our cross section, in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. So in order to determine those numbers, we are going to use another function, and it will get a bit complicated perhaps, but it's easier than it seems. So let me just copy this function here. Actually, it's not a function, it's a subroutine because it doesn't return any value. And this is it. So with this subroutine, we are going to get how many bars we are going to place in each side of our cross sections. And we are using this keyword here by reference, which means that we are going to pass these values into these variables here, which we are referencing. So let me write this function here better to make it more clear. So now, this is a comment actually, we have to use centimeters for this function in order to that it can work. And now we have to pass the, the values of our cross section. And what we are doing is write the number of bars into these three parameters. So we are passing these parameters by reference, as we say in, in Visual Basic or any other programming language. So these are the number of bars for a circular cross-section, which is really easy to calculate because you don't have to do anything. And now we also have to determine the number of bars that we need for our rectangular cross-section in, in both directions. And this is what this function is doing. It basically, it's, it's proportional to the length of its side. So it's not that complex actually. Okay, so now we already have the number of bars that we need in each direction. And now we can use the we can use this function from the etaps API. Again, I'm not going to jump into it. You can just look it up. And but basically, it, of course, it's important that to be designed is set to, to false, as you can see here. And it's also important. Yeah, that's that's basically all. Just take care of the of the units. Of course, this is not integer. This is long. This is 
not a typo, but you have to take care that that's not actually true. In case that you want to check the actual variable type that you have to pass to this function, you can just take a look here and say and see that pattern is not integer as it says in the in the documentation, but it's actually a long variable. So and of course I have defined that that way. So once you take that into account, you can just move on and uh, write this function into our code. And yes, I think that's basically it. I'm sorry if that was too long. So yeah, that's basically it. And now we have already defined our cross sections. I think we are ready to write that into etaps. So let's, yes, I think so. I think we are ready to go. Let's try that out. Mm -hmm, perfect. But of course we are going to use a, a button in Excel, which is far more comfortable in my opinion. Let me, one second. Yes, so for instance, set cross sections. Set cross set. Sorry for that. Okay, so now let's put Excel in this side of the screen and it ups here and we have to collapse this now. Okay, this is going to be tricky, so pay attention. If now we can click here. Okay, it looks fine, like it ups is doing something, something at least. And okay, now we can extend here so if we don't see the imported sections we have to come here to section properties and now we can see our proper our new frame properties here so let's take a look into this one so you can see that the names are curated regarding the properties of its cross section so it's more clear in my opinion and now let's take a look into it so okay so don't be afraid because the parameters look uh, sorry, they look that like they are uh, actually correct, uh, right? The, the clear cover is fine and the number of bars it's the same as the name, so it seems all right. But if you <laughs> but if you take a look into this uh, picture of our cross section, you can see that the reinforcement doesn't make any sense. Okay, so this is a, an error, a visualization error from etaps. So first, it's not my fault. And second, it's not actual an error. It's not an actual error, so it's just a visualization. And if you do the calculation with these cross sections, it will actually uh, give you good results. But if you say, okay, but I don't really trust ETAPs and so on, so I want this cross section to be really properly um, drawn here in ETAPs, what you have to do, and this is very important, <laughs> is to export your model and import it again. So this is a bit time consuming perhaps, and it's not that automatic as we would wish, but it is an error for NetApps, I can't do anything about that, and if you want to visualize that properly, you have to export that as an it's okay file and import it back. And it would be great if you can write to the CSI support of NetApps to fix this problem, because I already reported this problem like four years ago, and uh, it, it's not fixed yet. So it could be great if you could make a bit more pressure into the support team of ETAPS. Okay, so I've already exported my model. Let's import it back. Save changes. No, I don't want to save the changes. And now this is our uh, exported text file that we are going to import back right now. Hopefully it's importing. So yes. It takes one second, okay. So now we are back here and the first thing we have to take care of is if the import has worked. I mean, this is ETAPS, it doesn't have nothing to do with my macro or with anything. So you can see that the import process hasn't really worked that, that well uh, because in the first level, there are very a lot of elements missing, like the slab is missing and the walls are missing as well. So I'm going to just copy them from the level above that. Just give me one second, so I have to copy the walls and the floors, but just from the story too. So, that's right, I have to copy this thing. I'm selecting this thing, I hope. 
I hope so, and I'm going to replicate them into the first story, so... Okay, now we are ready to go, I think that our building looks nice again, and finally, <laughs> let's take a look, let's take a look into our cross sections. So for instance, these are our circular cross sections, and if I we make double click, we can see that now the reinforcement is perfectly drawn here, again, it could have worked uh, previously before the export process, but now we can visualize it better, or correct, better said. Okay, and now let's take a look into our rectangular cross-section as well. And it's interesting because you can see that our macro, I think that's the best part of it, is automatically decide deciding how many bars go in its direction. So it actually makes sense and it looks like a nice concrete column. Okay, so that was the first part of our tutorial and now we have to automatically design our columns based on these sections that we have automatically created with the ETAPS API. And now what we are going to do is to optimize the cross section for its column element in ETAPS. And in order to do a cross section optimization based on a list, based on a list of cross sections, how you do that in ETAPS is basically with an auto select list. So we have to come to frame sections and add a new auto select list, this here, and of course, you might be wondering <laughs> how or why can't we do this with the ETAPS API? And the reason is very simple. So if we come back to the documentation file here and let's go to the interface um, frame property, now we can see that there is actually an option for auto select list, list but for some reason, it works only with steel cross sections. So there is no function for auto select list for uh, concrete cross sections. It could be really nice if someone else could write the support team in order to implement that function. It shouldn't be that complicated. So for that stupid reason, we have to do it manually. And now I'm going to define auto list one. I'm, co I'm going to define three different auto lists because I want to control more or less which sections we are doing the optimization with. So first, let's define a, a list with the biggest cross sections, the one that are that are diameter 50 centimeters. That's right. Okay. And now let's define our second auto list. Auto list two with the smaller circular cross sections from 30 to 40. Um, centimeters in diameter that's right and finally let's define a, another auto list with the rectangular cross sections okay auto list number three with these two cross sections here okay all right now we are ready with our auto lists here and we can assign them to our concrete columns and in order to do this a bit fast, I've already defined um, three groups here. So now I select the group number one with our columns in the lower levels. And I can assign the first list to, them, to those columns. That's right. And now I select the columns in the upper levels and I assign the second list into those elements. And finally, I do the same with the last group. Okay, so our auto lists are already assigned and now we have to run the analysis and the concrete design and if we want, of course, we can do that with a macro. So that's what I'm going to use. This is very similar to what we did in our, in our other tutorial about uh, optimizing and designing a, a steel truss structure. This is even more simple because we are not modifying the geometry. So I'm not going to explain that much further if you want you can take a look to that tutorial again so this is my function in order to run the analysis and but we don't need this line in order to run the analysis uh, and the concrete design okay so that's our function and if we want of course we can use another button in our excel sheet to call this function or this subroutine so optimize cross sections and 
optimize cross sections. Oh, but no spell errors, please. Okay, and now let's call this function again. No, again, not for the first time. <laughs> okay, and, and I'm sorry, I forgot that in order to run the analysis with the ETAPS API, first we have to save our ETAPS model. And if you remember, uh, yes, if you remember, we imported this from a text file before in order to visualize the cross section um, properly due to an error of ETAPS. So now we have to save our model in order to be able to run the analysis. And it shouldn't take long. Let's just wait one second. Okay, so now we are ready to run the analysis. Okay, so the design is already finished. And now what we can do is to displace our ratios between the acting forces and the design capacity and the strength capacity. So we can do it like this. That's right, design, uh, display, sorry, column, axial force and moment interaction ratios. And we can basically see, if I make it a bit bigger, I hope it's not too small for you, but basically you can see that all ratios are smaller than one, which means that uh, each column, every column is working, so there are not problems. And you can also see that they are not, uh, not really close to zero, which means that the design, that the columns are being optimized and they are working. So basically if we click here, we can see that the, that ETAPS shows a um, uh, a cross section with diameter 50 and, and these reinforcement patterns and that's right you can see it here properly and it's working and if you go perhaps to an inner column uh, we have a different reinforcement or perhaps if we go to the upper levels that's right we can see that we have a different reinforcement, reinforcement pattern here and again with the other columns so it's basically to sum up that's how you run a cross-section optimization with uh, concrete cross-sections it it's a bit more mm, not as simple as with steel cross-sections but still it's a very efficient approach to use the itaps api so that's what that's was it and see you in further tutorials thank you very much